We love the DJ Osmo Pocket 3, but after using it for a while in B-roll and A-roll shots... We think that if you're considering buying it, you should first listen to what we have to say because... Namaste, we're DHRME. Dang homies reviewing multiple electronics. For all practical purposes, the Pocket 3 can replace our Sony ZV-E10s here. For all except three. Number one, this f1.4 Sigma lens that we have on the ZV-E10 gives us some tasty background blur. And it's perfect for a small studio where you want ugly backgrounds to look cinematic simply by virtue of blurring them. However, place the Osmo Pocket 3 at the same distance and this is what you get. No blur, just a sharp, almost in focus background. To really get that depth of field, you need to bring the pocket up close to your face. And even then, it's not as aesthetically pleasing as the ZV-E10. And the second reason why the ZV-E10 is better, in my opinion, is simple. Quality. Look, video quality is great on the Pocket 3 and DJI has done a lot in the software as well as hardware to make the quality look good. While the video coming out of this is better than your phone, for the most part, it's not quite at the level of even an APS-C sensor in terms of how much light it can let in. Even a micro four-thirds system, which can be had for pretty cheap, has a bigger sensor. As irresistible a purchase the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is, it's not weather sealed in any way. The ZV-E10 is moisture resistant, whatever that means. And that's a shame because the Pocket 3's compact size makes for shooting outdoors fun and convenient. So yes, shoot outdoors, but be aware of the elements and if the heavens open up, make sure you get it straight into some sort of protective case. The face tracking is pretty cool on the Pocket 3 and the camera can follow you around, but pocketeers beware. If you're out and about, those gusts of wind will blow your Osmo Pocket 3 over even when it's on a small or lightweight tripod. And if you don't have it on a tripod, God be with you. The Sony is considerably heavier and less likely to fall down, but even if it did, it's a lot more robust than the dainty gimbal on the DJI. Your new Pocket 3 is gonna be punched in the gimbals if it falls on the floor and any man can tell you that that hurts. Being punched in the gimbals. Speaking of punching in, this is the default field of view on the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. I think it's pretty good for a vlogging shot, but the disadvantage is that sometimes you wanna punch into something. And with the physical space limitations DJI is working with, there's one clear victim, the ability to zoom. As a result, the Pocket 3 can only do digital zoom. And we all know what digital zoom is. Ugly. All right, let's zoom in to a photo finish. The DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is made for videos. With its gimbal stabilization and video modes, you can get a ton of great footage on the go. But if you're someone who really wants to document the past with photos and videos, even at a 50-50 ratio, this is not the device for you. The photographs for me were worse than what my phone could achieve. So that's not a reason to buy this device. Let's move on from the past to the future. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance you have gas. You know gear acquisition syndrome. So what do you do when you get bored with something like the Sony ZV-E10? Why, you can get some crazy lenses, of course. Well, you can also do that with the Pocket 3 with magnetic ultra-wide lenses, ND filters, and black mist filters, amongst other things. The gas kinda ends there. A camera with a removable lens just gives you insanely more options to tune your image, and that keeps the camera fun for far longer. And speaking of longer, Let's talk about durability and reliability. What did you think I was gonna say? Again, don't get us wrong, we bought the Pocket 3 and they're fantastic so far. The emphasis being on so far. With the lack of weather resistance, the presence of moving parts like a gimbal and the sealed battery, we're not sure how long these will last. The camera industry has been using replaceable batteries since decades and that's better for consumers and the planet. But like all modern devices, DJ is betting that once your built-in batteries die a few years later and the software updates stop coming, you will move on to something shiny and new. Whereas I'm pretty sure I can sell this old ZV-E10 even a few years from now without the feeling that I'm conning someone because if the batteries are dead, they can just switch them up. If the lens is shattered well, they can buy that as well. What you can't buy is a decent size, so it fits in the slot. You know, the memory card that these devices need. On any normal camera like the Sony ZV-E10, it's a normal SD card, and that's normal. 
because many laptops and even the newer MacBooks have an SD card reader. But DJI? Nope. They had to go and ruin it by adding a micro SD card slot, which means none of your existing SD cards will work and you've probably not bought a micro SD card since smartphones stop supporting expandable storage. And depending on your SD card slot, you may or may not have one for a micro SD, meaning you'll need to keep the adapter handy. So make sure you budget for buying a micro SD card along with your Osmo Pocket 3. Speaking of small things that cause big annoyances, let's talk about the DJI ecosystem. I think it's time we rename the word ecosystem to anti-competition because honestly, that is what it all is. Because the DJI Mic 2 that you can buy either with the creator combo or separately costs a good chunk of change. Now, this is a great product, the DJI Mic 2, again, don't get me wrong, we even had the DJI Mic 1 before we had the Osmo Pocket 3, but my problem is this. DJI has gone out of its way to exclude other products and let me explain before you jump on us. Number one, there's no three and a half millimeter mic input on the DJI Pocket Osmo 3. While there are arguments to be made for leaving that port off of consumer phones, this is a creator tool. So for somebody who wants the best audio, they're not able to plug an analog microphone into the Pocket 3 directly. You do get a USB type C port and maybe there are some shenanigans you can do to plug your microphone there, but that is not super convenient. And number two, they've even gone out and just Remove the Bluetooth menu. I don't see any Bluetooth settings in the DJI Pocket Osmo 3. And what that means is I can't use any of my Bluetooth earbuds to either monitor or to use as a microphone. And as you guys know, we have a ton of these here in the studio. So it would be really convenient for now and then to just use Bluetooth microphones with the DJI Pocket Osmo 3. Now, this is very much reminiscent of the global leader in anti-competition behavior, Apple. Yes, we are calling you out. Now, uh, the AirPods, for example, they don't have a separate app. The settings for AirPods are baked into the operating system and no other earbud manufacturer can access those except Beats, which is also an Apple brand. So if you are a Bluetooth earbud manufacturer, you have to develop your own app for iOS. Isn't that fun? And just like Apple, DJ will say, you know, this makes our software, hardware, and services work better together. Wow. You know what? Why don't you try giving us those Bluetooth options and a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, and then we'll talk. Till then, we ain't buying it. And while on buying, all the gear we talked about in this video, we bought with our own money. You can find a disclosure in the description of every video we publish, and we will never do a review of a product if we've been paid. That helps us stay transparent towards you guys and as unbiased as humanly possible. So thanks to you guys, our members and Fuck Montier supporters. Radioactive Iguana Dude, Gamma Panda and Paula. Thank you guys so much. You've been looking at our one inchers. <laughs> and we've been DHRME. Dewey. Dewey. As irresistible, as irresistible I purchased the DJI Osmo. As irresistible I purchased the DJI Osmo Pocket. As irresistible as...